I was asked by Dhruv to talk about private practice in the lymphedema program. And I, and I want to specify that, that it's going to, I'm going to talk about lymphedema surgery program specifically. And I'm going to call it self-employed, not private practice, because, you know, I, I, for those that don't know me, I was actually at an academic practice. And I, I never would have imagined myself in, in a private practice up to a year ago, but things happen. So, uh, so what's, what's the evolution of some plastic surgeons? Let's think about that. Um, I, I, was given, I was given seven minutes to talk about the self-employed model, quote, from a 50,000-foot view. And I'm sure a lot of, there are some questions in the back of the room that you would probably want a lot more details. I'm happy to talk to you at dinner tonight about that. But really, I always thought about the evolution of plastic and so You guys in the front, maybe with more gray hair, Joe, no hair. Uh, but uh, <laughs> just, just, just tell me if you think this is correct, okay? So we all started out as grunts, med students, then residents, and uh, then going on, then, then we, were, we were junior faculty. That was me. Like, I, I could operate on anybody. And then, then we became scholars. We became full professors. We published 100 papers. And what Drew actually says, for the people that are in the room, you guys don't realize maybe some of the, these are world thought leaders in front of us here. You know, and me, I, I can't write a paper to save my life. So I was just happy writing one paper that made a difference, to be honest. And then, um, then we like to think of plastic surgeon as the evolution. Okay, going going to the dark side is, is what it's it's really called, and I, I I like to think I went to the dark side ten years earlier than I should have, uh, which I'm happy and my family's happy and my kids will actually know my name. Um, so anyway, so now that I wasted all my time, uh, <laughs> let's talk about what's comprehensive. I honestly didn't want to go through all the deep nits and grits of this because I knew I couldn't cover it all. But the truth is, I knew. Dr. Mahar was going to cover a lot of details, but what we do always need is not in a private practice program, the lymphedema surgery program in general needs a comprehensive team. Well, obviously, physiotherapy, surgeons, patients, everything down this list, and that's only a half of the list I have. I just wanted to make it big enough so you guys can see. Um, but uh, some of the things is, is I had submitted program proposals to build these things, and um, one of the, the biggest, toughest ones is getting buy-in buy-in from a hospital. As some of the therapists know in the group, therapy and lymphedema, I'm sure the next talk speakers will talk about how it's a money loser, but it has to be part of your survivorship for cancer patients. It has to be part of your pediatric population. It's a disease that needs to be treated as a comprehensive center. And that's hard to do in a community-based practice. You have institutions that are just financially driven, and they don't accept the fact that we need to treat patients as a whole. If it's a money loser, it's getting cut. So that's, that's a tough thing to do. So um, that's number one, a comprehensive team. How do you build it? Yes, it's hard to build. Um, Pet peeve of mine, provide the complete spectrum of care regardless of what practice you're in. Uh, no dabbling in lymphatic surgery if you're planning on building a lymphedema surgery. No, I just operate on upper extremities. No, I just operate on left big toes. Uh, I just do bypass. I just do lymph node trans. I, it needs to be the whole spectrum because you, you can't trust your surgeon to give you the right, right treatment unless they're doing the right thing for you and they have all the tools in the toolbox to treat it. Uh, so from a surgical standpoint, that's the whole spectrum. This is everything that you guys heard about today. Um, and that's my whole concept of having, if all you have a ha is a hammer in your toolbox, then everything's a nail. And we can't treat patients like that because as you guys have heard, every lymphedema patient is different. There's all these grading staging systems and each one of them should have a different algorithm. Um, because you have their outcomes, education, outreach. This is the tough one. Um, Outreach is a big one, and that's, that's developing the relationships that Dr. Mahar talked about is how do you get buy-in? You already know that physicians out there, primary care physicians are saying, here's this garment, good luck to you, you know? And now I'm going in saying, hey, I do this voodoo magic, magic surgery, and you know that it's never worked before. And that's a tough one, so that's, that's, been, that's been a huge battle. Um, so um, other things I do, you know, a lot of things is reaching out to the community. I have more time now, so I go out and do a lot of talks to um, community support groups all the, around the country. And uh, really is initiating the things. I love that one talk today about what's been going on here in an academic center, the preoperative imaging. That's the fact that they've been doing that for so long here is awesome. But other major academic centers, like let's say MD Anderson, didn't even start that until a couple years ago, and major cancer centers. now. Yeah, me, I'm going to these community surgery uh, centers and saying, hey, let's initiate these and put these in our algorithms. And that's really bringing tertiary care to the community. And that's a model that's really important to me. Uh, and that's what I have support from with the healthcare system that I'm working with right now. 
And then, of course, clinical research. I don't think we should give up on research if you're in a private practice setting at all. It's very easy. Actually, I think it's even easier because I can crank on surgeries. I don't have sl residents slowing me down. I have, uh, you know, um, I mean, bypasses are taking an hour and a half. Lymph node transfers, two and a half. It's, and I have a PA that's helping me, and that's about it right now. I would love to have a partner, but uh, it's a matter of just time. But uh, clinical research, I, I think collecting data is still important. Um, so now appropriate infrastructure. We talked about that a lot. Uh, why would you want to, you know, operate, well, who, who has an old tube television in the house still, you know? No, no one, right? So why would we do this surgery with an old tube television? It makes no sense. This is a picture, I, I picked the brains of therapists around the country for a year before I designed my, my institute as far as what's ideal. Like we call, call them the dream therapy rooms as far as how we're going to build our system. Equipment, like I said, look at these two pictures. You guys can't even see this, but there's you know, tube television, HD or 4K, whatever you want to call it. But that's, that's, that's the difference in, in, in just efficiency. It doesn't make the surgeon better, but it does help. So, and better imaging, like we talked about. Personnel is critical. Uh, you, you definitely can't do this alone. I, I have a full team. Uh, just these patients are time consuming, as everybody knows. So uh, you need a lot of people for everything. And uh, one of the biggest problems is insurance authorization. Safety and quality, obviously mandated. Uh, we already went through that, so I'm gonna skip that. And feasibility, the truth is, is it feasible to do this program in a private practice setting? And I would say it's uh, pretty hard, to be honest. Uh, it's, it's, been, it's been a battle. Uh, startup costs are big. Uh, structure, the hospital relationships, the ancillary relationships, standalone clinics are, are tough unless you have the institutional support. And uh, there are different, numer I'm not going to get into the details, but the different models that we've evolved through from an institute model, from a, a medical directorship model, from a program, uh, all these are just variations that can be done in a private setting, uh, but are, are there pros and cons to everything? That's beyond the, uh, this talk. But, uh, and then the other issue is experimental, investigational, and unproven. And those, that's a true statement, as we've talked here. We're, we're talking to you guys about all this novel stuff, but is it, is it the standard of care amongst the people in the front row? Absolutely, but all of us are all very susceptible and uh, cautious to say we're not promising that this is the end all be all as opposed to 40 years ago when this was all done again and they uh, hit a roadblock. So those, those are the five things. Uh, one, that Medicare, um, I just put that in because there's a huge misconception uh, among the private patients and it has been reiterated in the LN, NLN community many times, but uh, Lymphatic surgeries are covered under Medicare for a certain extent, and that's another story. But again, it's a self-employed model, um, so this is going to the dark side. Um, and that's a comprehensive team, a uh, complete spectrum of care from, for me, it's the whole spectrum of, of everybody involved, not just surgery. Uh, and and I, I said that before, it's uh, a lot of my patients aren't surgical candidates. And incorporating advances in technology, don't use an old tube, tube television, and building the right infra infrastructure, safety, and uh, the question really down, comes down to it is, if hospital systems are closing their lymphedema programs, how is it that I'm viable? And uh, that's a tough problem, to be honest. And so maybe next year, I'll, I'll be talking to you about my unemployed model. Okay. <laughs> Thank you.